Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. To many people, the essence of Kanye West is a contradiction. He embodies two sides of the hip-hop spectrum, the conscious side and the ignorant side. On one side of the spectrum, he embodies the ideas of brotherhood, black empowerment. He also addresses a lot of social and political aspects as well. But on the other side, Kanye West is a narcissist who seems to think that he's the smartest person in the room. He hates media attention and how they portray him, but he also knows how to keep himself in the media microscope because of his own actions. Hello and welcome back to Lovely TTV. Before we get into this deep dive, make sure you hit the thumbs up on the video and subscribe down below. Earlier this week, Kanye West faced backlash for his White Lives Matter shirts at his Yeezy show. Everyone weighed in on it. Everyone from Little Boosie, P Diddy, and even Gigi Hadid had something to say about the situation. It got so bad that Kanye West went off on everyone. He even went on to call Gigi Hadid a Karen. So this whole situation was a mess. I'm going to go ahead and show you these clips now. Kanye West calls Gigi Hadid a privileged Karen and a zombie as their online feud heats up. I mean, I was expecting it. I'm not going to lie. Let's rewind. The rapper made headlines earlier this week for wearing a White Lives Matter shirt at his Yeezy Season 9 presentation at Paris Fashion Week. Why did you do that and what did it mean? I do certain things from a feeling. I like, I just, I just channel the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and just brilliance. Shortly after, Vogue editor Gabriella Carifa Johnson criticized the designer for sporting the controversial slogan. Ye clapped back, taking aim at the journalist by slamming her fashion sense. I'm just extremely happy. Can you tell by my face? <laughs> well, Gigi was having none of that and defended Gabriella on Instagram, calling the rapper a bully and a joke. Then, after Tremaine Emery, the creative director of Supreme, called out Kanye for using the late fashion designer Virgil Abloh's death in his victim campaign, claiming he badmouthed Virgil before he died of cancer last year, Gigi swooped into the comments to second that saying Ye didn't treat Virgil like a friend. Some people will believe it. That's when the rapper screenshot Gigi's comment, circled it, and posted it to Instagram, writing that he's not going to get ran over by Hollywood again. Quote, Gigi, you a privileged Karen. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You're a zombie. You speak up here, but didn't speak up when my child was kidnapped on her birthday. The Grammy winner, who shares four children with his ex, Kim Kardashian, previously claimed he wasn't invited to his four-year-old daughter Chicago's birthday birthday party in January, which Kim has adamantly denied. People don't see the context behind it. And while Gigi has yet to respond to the Yeezy designer's latest diss, she Diddy went online to state how he felt about this situation, and he also took to the Breakfast Club to further elaborate as well. So check this out, y'all. Um, I am not about to be addressing every last thing that's going on in the world on the internet. Um, but the thing I do have to address is this White Lives Matter t-shirt. Um, I've always been there and I will always support my brother Kanye as a free thinker. But the White Lives Matter t-shirt, I don't rock with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with it. And with the press and with fashion is doing, thinking it's a joke. But right now, all America has planned for us is poverty, incarceration, and death. So before I could get to any other lives matter, which all lives matter, you know what I'm saying? That black lives matter, don't play with it. If you can't, don't, don't wear the shirt, don't buy the shirt, don't play with the shirt. It's not a joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, white lives matter, to, to, to put that up against the black lives matter. No, we need to be focused on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let the white lives, let them white lives they self out. Let's 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 black lives ourselves, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right now. And and I don't think no it's it's not the time for unnecessary noise. 
with you know him or or Karen Owens. You know what I'm saying? Because this is really Candace. 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 Karen Candace. She Karen Owens now. <laughs> <laughs> That's her new name. Daddy, did he? She Candace is too black of a name. Mm. She's Karen Owens. Mm -hmm. All right. But, so but that's what I've always respected. So after Diddy was seen on The Breakfast Club, Kanye West decided to continue his Instagram rant against those who caught out his decision to wear a White Lives Matter <laughs> shirt. So on Friday, October 7th, he took to social media to blast Diddy, Adidas, Lil Boosie, and more child. In the case of Diddy, Kanye <clears throat> West shared screenshots of their text messages with the both of them. And basically in the text messages, he's saying, so Kanye wrote this on Instagram. He says, God is love. My brother misspoke to me, but I still love him. So he goes on to post their text messages and it says this. I didn't like our combo. I'm selling these teas. Nobody gets in between me and my money. This is my grandfather texting you now. Never call me with no bullshit like that again, unless you're ready to green light me. Because anybody who got on that tea is me. Out of respect for everything you've meant to me, I'll be quiet as Virgil. But now I know I've hurt people I love with threats. Come on, do something illegal to me now, please. Then he goes on to the next post and he writes, Jesus is king. Diddy replies back and says, see you soon in the comments. So in this text, it says this. As soon as I land, we'll meet face to face. Send me an address. Kanye says, nigga, fuck you. You fed. Then Kanye goes on to post this. He says, Jesus is Jew. And in the text message, it says, nigga, send me your address. Let's stop playing these internet games and don't feel threatened. You'll be just fine. Just love. Kanye replies back by saying, this isn't a game. I'm going to use you as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence me. I told you this was war. Now go get some business. Then he writes, God is love. And he shows these text messages. Diddy says, I'm just trying to talk to you as a black man. And I'm talking to you because this is hurting our people. Stop. Kanye replies, anything you text, I will post. I love you. And you guys are breaking my heart. I accept your apology in advance. So people were shook. He posted all of this within the span of five minutes. Then he went on to address little Boosie, who had a lot to say about him. Kanye says, don't speak on me, little Boosie. Speak to me, yeah, little nerd-ass me. Come smack me or come shoot me. I'm the one that got bullied by the entire black celebrity community. Now I'm back to shoot the school up. Child. He wrote it. I'm just reading it. We ought to be back there probably about 15, 20 minutes. Kanye West say he's stepping. What y'all talking about? I need to go on Instagram. I just got up. Yeah, that man, he need help, B. Yeah. He need to go to, he need to, he need this, to go. That's why I said something in the milk. I yeah, he need, it. yeah. Somebody he, said, man, come in, something in the milk. He I need to, he need to, he need to go to that crazy house, dude. Well, so what he saying, he feel like a white nerd? Yes, he said he been getting bullied by the black. And he feel like a white nerd, now he back to shoot the school up? Bullied by the black community, celebrity community. Don't speak on me, Lil Boosie. Speak on me. Speak to me, yeah, little nerd ass me. Come smack me or come shoot me. I'm the one that got bullied by the entire black celebrity community. Now I'm back to shoot the school up. Oh, he crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, he crazy. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he acting like a white boy. He acting like a white boy. He acting like a white boy. He crazy. Yeah, he ain't safe. He, 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 yeah, he ain't safe around nobody. Yeah, that nigga down. He acting like a crazy white boy. He no more Yeezys, man. No more Yeezys. No more Yeezys. Yeezys, man. We ain't wearing no more Yeezys, man. Then he also went on to post again and say, God is love. This is why I'm a leader, and I just made both of these guys my security. Because anything happened to me, y'all the top suspects. I'm going to be selling White Lives Matter tees later today. So that was their back and forth. The whole situation is a straight up mess at this point. So now on top of him going back and forth with Diddy, um, he also went viral because he did a major interview on Thursday night with Tucker Carlson on Fox News. And basically because he got tons of backlash for the White Lives Matter shirt, he wanted to go on Tucker Carlson's show and address the situation. And he told Tucker Carlson that the reason why he put on the shirts was because the idea of him wearing those shirts were funny to him. 
and because white lives really do matter. Now, Kanye also went on to hit on a wide range of topics. He spoke about how kids in Chicago get killed every week, but they're not on the news like the kids who got killed in Uvales. He also spoke very highly about his father. He talked about black empowerment and black people being financially stable. He also called the media demonic for supporting Lizzo's obesity. He also called out Planned Parenthood and Margaret Sanger. He even called out Jared and Josh Kushner. When I tell you this interview was an hour long but it blew my mind and I watched it live on television and I really enjoyed it you know what I'm saying because it was just another side of Kanye and on top of that he basically reiterated everything I had said in my Kanye Kim Kardashian video where I stated in that video that the Kardashians would not have been able to get into these fashion houses if it were not for Kanye's connections and he basically reiterated that and confirm that it was because of him that Kim Kardashian is able to, you know, get the deals that she gets, you know, with these different brands. Because if it was not for Kanye's connection, she'd literally still be modeling clothes for Kitson. <laughs> okay, let's keep it real. So I want you guys to watch the highlights of the show and the things that were said. So y'all go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Yeah. Why, wh why did you do that and what did it mean? You know, I did. I do certain things from a feeling. I like. I just. I just channel the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and just brilliance. So the answer to why I wrote "White Lives Matter" on a shirt is because they do. You know, the media ridiculed me for getting the house next door to Kim to see my children. And they even said that I was stalking her and her new boyfriend because I bought the house next door to see my children. Additionally, Kanye explains that he believes people like Kris Jenner's boyfriend, Corey Gamble, and Vogue editor, Gabriella Karifa Johnson, were quote, made in a laboratory. You know, so many things that are put in Kim's head. You know, they bring influencers like, no one ever knew where Corey Gamble came from. No one in the fashion world knows where Gabby came from. These people were practically made in a laboratory, in my opinion. And one of the things that they're really good at doing is being nice and being likable. And what they do is for people that have some form of influence, whether it's an educated black woman like my mother, that became the head of the English department at Chicago State University, or whether it's the most influential uh, white woman on the planet, being my ex-wife, they have people that are around them at all times telling them what to be afraid of. Ivanka, Jared, and Josh. And a couple days later, I found out that Josh Kushner had 10% of skims, which is a line that I had developed with Kim. And I had a lot of issues with the imagery of, of skims. I felt like there was a, a lot of imagery that was overly sexualized and things that I wouldn't want to see my wife and definitely not my daughters doing in the future in order to sell product. Uh, but it, it reaches another level when it's like, okay, well, this is what my wife is doing, and this is what they're doing for, this is what she's doing for our children. But it reaches another level when her business partners are selling pieces of company that they don't have to because the company's already so successful and it's an internet-based company. So it's like they're really just selling off the company in order to create more relationships for themselves that are unneeded. It's like, but as a person that has really built something from nothing, when I sit across the table from a Josh Kushner and he just feels so entitled to that idea, and this person has never brought anything of value other than so-called being a good venture capitalist, I have, a major, I have a major issue with that. And it makes me feel like they weren't serving my boy, Trump, the way we could have. It's so based on a lot of the Yeezy ideas. Then it's based on all of the relationships in fashion, because I had to use my relationships in fashion in order to 
establish Kim because I had to use my relationships and fashion in order to establish Kim in a way where fashionable people would say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm down to wear Kim's line. So to me, Kanye West definitely came off as well-spoken. He was definitely thinking about the words that were coming out of his mouth. And I like the fact that Tucker Carlson just allowed him to talk. But at the end of the day, you know, these are his personal beliefs. And I don't agree with everything that he said, but all I can do is respect what he's saying and, you know, how his mind works. But there were some things that he said that I didn't really agree with. One of the things that I found really funny is that he was talking about, you know, Kim, she's a 40-something-year-old multi-billionaire with four black children, and this is how, the you know, the fashion lines are treating her. They're trying to overly sexualize her image. Now, first of all, let's get this clear, Kanye. Your kids are not black. They're biracial, okay? So let's start there. If you wanted black children, you would have had kids with Alexis. You had kids with Kim Kardashian, who was a white woman, meaning that your children are biracial. I don't know how many times we have to reiterate that to you. But with that being said... I also find it very funny that he's upset about, you know, these fashion houses and these brands trying to overly sexualize Kim. But did he forget that is how she got her foot in the door? That is what made him fall in love with Kim was because of that overly sexual image. Also, let's not forget that whole, uh-huh, honey, video where Kim was on a motorcycle with Kanye West pushing sex, topless. So it's funny that when Kanye West wants to cultivate Kim's sexiness and her sex appeal and use her body to push his brand and to push himself, it's okay. But then when she does it and makes money for herself, be pushing her body and things like that, it's an issue. From the time Kim has gotten on the scene, she's always pushed sex. It didn't take these brands to force her to do that. Because remember, she got on by coordinating with her mother and Ray J with releasing a sex tape. So that shows you right there, Kim is not a victim in this. She was the conductor of this sexualized image that's not being tied to her, even as a 40-plus-year-old woman with four children. This is the imagery that Kim cultivated and pushed onto the masses. You know what I'm saying? But it's very funny, now that he has two daughters, he doesn't want his daughters going down the same route. But it was cute when she was influencing all of our daughters, all of our nieces. I'm just saying you know, it's always interesting when people have daughters. Now, all of a sudden, you know, they, they want their daughters to be nuns and they want their daughters to, you know, carry themselves a certain way. But they had no respect for how other people's daughters were being affected mentally with the imagery that was being perpetuated by the Kardashians and the Jenners. But that's a whole nother video. So now on top of him blasting Kim Kardashian, he also got into it with Adidas. Now, this was crazy. Adidas basically sent out a message. People were feeling like Kanye was saying a bit of anti-Semitic stuff during his interview yesterday. So Adidas sent out this message and they said basically that Kanye West's partnership with Adidas is under review after his White Lives Matter debacle. So this is what Adidas said. They says all successful partnerships are rooted in mutual respect and values. We have taken the decision to place the partnership under review. So they said they're going to continue to work with him, but they're definitely reviewing this partnership and seeing if it's good for their own brand. Well, Kanye went off. Kanye took to social media and he basically blasted them. And he said this, F you Adidas, I am Adidas. Adidas are and stole my designs. So that is what Kanye West had to say to Adidas. So I'm assuming that Adidas may let him go. Who knows? But now what I find very interesting about him complaining about Adidas allegedly stealing his designs, because he's been on this rant with Adidas for a few months now. Well, if you guys do not know, not one, but two designers have come out against Kanye West, stating that Kanye West did the same thing that he's accusing Adidas of. So if you guys do not know, um, Kanye has been gearing up to launch the Yeezy Shades, which is a super modern wrapped around sunglass line. He had planned to release it as part of his Yeezy Gap collection. Now that he's having issues with Gap, he was planning on just releasing them anyways. And he's been spotted in these glasses everywhere at different fashion shows and things like that. But now what's going on is that a young man named Frankie Baca is blasting Kanye West because he's seen how Kanye West is spinning this narrative about Adidas still in his designs. Meanwhile, he's calling out Kanye West for his hypocrisy. Now, Frankie Baca is a young designer, and he's saying that basically he stole those designs from him. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys Frankie's video. Y'all go ahead and check this out. 
How Kanye West's Yeezy brand starrowed my design. These glasses that are all over social media, worn by countless celebrities, were my design, and they were taken without my knowledge. I was discovered by Kanye West's team a year ago by Digital Nas, who is a creative for Kanye West. I gave Kanye West's manager several of my designs to give to Ye. And a note that says how much of a hero Kanye was to me and how I would just love to work with him. Fast forward to about a month ago where I'm getting tagged and people asking me about this picture of Kanye West and Lil Durk. I asked Digital Nas about the situation that's going on and what him and his creatives think about it. And I get the response back, that's life, Frankie. This shouldn't happen to anyone and we have to stand up for this injustice even if it is against people we care about. If you know anybody associated with Kanye West or Yeezy Gap, please get in contact with me. Please help me by liking, commenting, and sharing this video. Follow my social media accounts. It costs you nothing. But by turning a blind eye, it costs me and other creatives everything. So Frankie goes on to say this. I just want a conversation with at Yeezy. Thank you to everyone showing support, but I do not blame Kanye West or Digital Nas, etc. I don't know exactly who took. I want to give all my friends I met through Digital Nas the benefit of the doubt. There are so many people these days, and I don't know who's watching my stories, website, etc. It could have been anyone, but the fact that this is my design, Kanye West or anyone is in the position to help me. I asked what would God do in this situation. It is so easy to help me, really, for a billion-dollar company to be doing this. I never wanted to be in this position. These are heroes to me, and it's very upsetting. But I work every hour of every day for this dream. While I'm struggling to pay bills, let alone be creative, I have to stand up for myself and small creatives around the world. It can happen to you too, but we can't let your continue. You can see when I first posted my glasses in the stories, also for sales of my exclusive account, hashtag Kanye West. Now, what's very interesting is that back in May, um, there was a company called Legendary Six. It's a Harlem-based clothing brand. And they had a similar story that Kanye West or Kanye West's people, quote-unquote, stole their hats. And they were told to send some to Chicago for a Donda event. They sent over 200 hats. And then all of a sudden, these same hats were part of Yeezy's first collection partnership with Gap. So Industry 6 blasted them months ago, but people thought they were reaching, they were over-exaggerating. But now that Baca's coming out saying the same thing, people are starting to give Kanye West and his so-called genius the side eye. So Legendary 6 says, at Kanye West, at Demna, this is the Legendary 6 brand. Kanye and Demna stole our idea for the Gap Yeezy Balenciaga collab. I flew out to LA to have a meeting with him at a big warehouse in LA. I brung five more hats with me to give to him that had Donda on the back for him and his family. He had a meeting with me and two of my friends asking me about the hats and I told him that they were for, and I told him that it was for my dad that passed away and that's what the six represents. I told him who my dad was and that he was a known person from Harlem and also in the Harlem World Group and that I'm selling them to keep his legacy going. He told me that he liked the idea that the hats were for my father that passed away and that his album Donda that was coming out was about his mother that passed away and that he wanted to do the collaborations with that hat. I told him we could do the collaboration, but the six has to stay on the hat because that's the whole reason why I do it. Kanye said, okay, and he he told me that he wanted to give all the extra that walk around the stage at the Donda concert in Chicago a hat to wear. I only had 200 hats in stock at the time. He told me to bring all the hats I had in stock and set up my friend that was in NY, a flight hotel from New York to L.A., to bring 200 hats that we had at the time to be used for the show in Chicago. The next day, Kanye and his team said that 200 hats weren't enough. They needed 400 and that they needed more. So Kanye just decided to wear one of the five hats I gave him when I met him at the Donda concert in Chicago. He told us to make some ideas for the Legendary Six Yeezy collaboration, which we did, but then Kanye stopped responding. Now, instead of doing it with us, he stole our idea and made his own hat without the six on it, which represents my father and made the hat with Gap and Demna, the person he sent the image to, the first night that he seen the hat. So these are just some of the pictures um, of the hat and the Yeezy collection. He also goes on to show text messages between him and Kanye. And then he also posted the picture 
um, that was posted by Kim Kardashian, where Kim Kardashian says, Balenciaga hot couture. And you can see um, Legendary Six's hat in this picture on Kanye West. And this is his father, Harlem rapper Ruddy Combs, who passed away in a fatal car crash. So that is who the hats were dedicated to. So this is really trashy, especially being that Kanye West is always crying about what Adidas has done to him and how they've stolen his designs and, you know, revamped it and remarketed it. So to know that he did this to other designers, especially up and coming indie brands, is very, very sad. So with that being said, say what you want to say about Kanye West, but he's definitely speaking his own truth as he sees it. So I leave the question with you all. What do you guys think about all of this Kanye West drama? So leave a comment down below. Don't forget to share the video. Give it a thumbs up. And make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Talk to y'all later. Deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.